My source for this clip is Alex Osborne, a freelancer. Now, I'll admit that I know very little on current Batman and Superman stories, and I have not seen Batman vs. Superman Dawn Justice, and I know I'm the only person on the planet who hasn't seen the movie, but I think everyone else will understand this article. I found it interesting, so I'm sure you'll be fascinated, unless you already know this, which you may have, or else you know the rumors, but this is a confirmation. Alright, here we go. So the movie had a point that I know, that I know exactly, that I don't know exactly, but you'll probably know. They showed Dead Robin. What the movie didn't say was, who was it in that suit? This has led you to great rumors, and speculations, and guesses. Well, Warner Brothers has confirmed the identity of the Dead Robin as Jason Todd. I honestly don't know much about this, so I'm staying very much the article written by my source. Now, let's talk the comics for a little while. In the comics, Jason Todd was killed by the Joker. This had given birth to speculations that the movie that the movie was following a comic continuity by having the dead Robin be Jason Todd. It was what many DC fans had hypothesized, and it turned out they were right. DC comic fans also know that Jason Todd was resurrected by Talia al Ghul in the Lazarus Pit, and came back under the name of the Red Hood. Of course, this is what many fans are hoping for in the next standalone Batman movie starring Ben Affleck. There are, of course, rumors but fans love to see what happens next. Now, this gives me room for debate. Yes, this is all the articles in me, but I'd like to talk to you personally about superhero movies being true comics. I know Marvel comics intimately, so I can talk about the examples of, following, of the movies following the comics. If you saw Spider-Man and Tobey Maguire, you saw the end fight between Spider-Man and the Green Goblin, but the Green Goblin got impaled by his own glider and died. So, that was so true to the comics. Another example is the death of Gwen Stacy in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. She was dropped at a high height and Spider-Man showed up to catch her and the acceleration snapped her neck. In the movie you heard the snap, in the comics the snap was written, just like in the comics. Another example is Jean Grey's death in X2 X-Men United. In the comics, Jean was cloned by the Phoenix as a drug to save her X-Men and sacrificed her life. But the Phoenix cocooned Jean's body for safety and she be resurrected. This was copied exactly from the comics. Her sacrifice and her birth to many of the evil Dark Phoenix. Now, I ask this question to you. Is this a good thing? So you really like a comic book storyline, and you watch the movie with that storyline, and it's exactly the same. It's awesome! You get to see your story and moving, moving and talking interpreted right in front of you. That's fucking awesome! I mean, it's really cool to see this. But... Herein lies the question, is this a good thing? Do you really want movies to be predictable because it is exactly how it was in the comics? This can get to be, to be boring after three views. You know what's going to happen before it happens. What's the point? Now, I know when you take movies that look like Harry Potter, The Hunger Games, and Twilight, you at least have a reason for knowing the story. But a hodgepodge collection of comic book stories you already know, a 7 one movie is just not likely what you want to see. Yes, I've watched the Marvel movies, and I appreciate most of them, because they differentiate from the comics. And I appreciate that they are in their own universes, and are their own story most of the time. So while yes, we know the story, the basic story of the comic book movie before we see it, some people will approach, appreciate the copy from the source material, and it's up to you to decide.